today I want to talk about faith and I want to address fear. My subject of, of my message today is, is simple faith over fear and I want to take a couple stories from the Bible, um, a couple people in the Bible that faced fear in their life and how it affected them and how they overcame and how some of them they fell prey to fear and got destroyed and so but before before we dive into it well while, uh, while uh, I'm talking you can open to second chronicles chapter 20 and just keep your finger there we're gonna skip around the chapter and take some examples from the story but we as a church we believe that every believer is a witness Bible calls us to be witnesses to share the good news of the gospel and so during this time we encourage you that you be a witness just because we're um, isolated that doesn't mean that we can't stop being witnesses we can use a social media to witness we can give somebody a phone call a family member a friend find out how they're doing this is a great time actually to 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 really talk to somebody there's no rush there's no busyness and we as believers we have to be witnesses and witness simply shares with somebody what God did for them what God what they've seen God do so we believe that every believer must be a witness and second thing we believe that every every believer has to be a disciple maker Jesus when he was leaving his disciples his last word said go into all the world preach the gospel and make disciples he gave us as believers not pastors not some special uh, uh, people in, in in the church but every person in the church needs to be a disciple maker meaning that just to be a person that that encourages others to grow encourages keeps others accountable he can, helps others to um it helps others to grow with Jesus and so uh here at hunger generation like we already have said we do have groups available even in this time you can go to hungrygen.com slash groups and get connected to people and grow together be discipled and be a disciple maker amen so I want to talk a little bit about faith and fear um, somebody said that fear stands for false evidence appearing appearing real and sometimes it is the truth that when we um, we can find ourselves in a situation in a place where we begin to um, make things up in our head where we begin to create worst case scenarios the things that do not did not uh, happen or most likely will never happen and we begin to believe those things that we make up and we begin to create and allow fear to creep in into our into our mind into our life into our body and and we can uh, we can allow fear to dominate our life and that's one side of fear but there's also the other side of fear a natural fear a fear that God has given us it's God given a fear to protect us for example fear of heights because we could fall and harm ourselves fear of of being alone because God has created us in a community God said it's not good for man to be alone and therefore we uh, we need community you know I thought uh, before this whole quarantine I thought I'm not a social person and I don't need you know I don't need people but few days into it few a week goes by uh, went by and I was like I was craving social interact, uh, in interaction and so doesn't matter um, you might think you're inner uh, what's the word in introvert not extrovert you're introvert you you don't really need much people but I think this pandemic and this quarantine showed that every type of a person in introvert and extrovert they need people we need people and so people uh fear comes in in in, uh, in in many different ways but I want to address today um the fear that we have that's a natural fear because in this time in 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 this in this uh season where we're in in this pandemic um it's true that people are dying all over the place it's true that people are getting infected and so it's easy to look at, at at what's going on this pandemic going on and begin to give in to this fear this fact that people are 
are dying and there is a chance that I might get infected there's a chance that you know I might um, I might suffer uh, harm there's a chance that I might even die and it's true it's not it's not a, an illusion it's not something it's not false evidence appearing real these are the facts there's also fear of of a financial loss financial harm which most a, a lot of us will will, will will come in 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 contact with and it's not a false fear it is a it is a uh, a legitimate concern a legitimate uncertainty today that we might uh, um, we might suffer a, a a financial harm because of uh because of businesses are shut down people being uh, laid off contracts are being canceled canceled new projects are being canceled and and and, and there is we can allow that fear of uncertainty, that fear of financial loss to begin to take dominance and root in our, in our heart and our mind. And it can lead us to a, a pretty devastating place. And so as people of faith, as children of faith, as people that have inheritance of faith, we must, we must choose faith over fear. And today I want to look at some examples in the Bible. Some people that have chosen fear and where it led them and some people that have chosen faith and where they have end up. Um, you have to understand that how you respond to your fear, the natural fear, the fears that we addressed, fear of financial loss, you know somebody, uh, the fear of, of going, uh, losing your business, fear of, of going bankrupt, fear of being laid off, fear of, of becoming, uh, of getting sick, fear of your parents getting sick, your grandparents getting sick and dying, you know all these natural fears but how we respond to that fear will either destroy us or it will, uh, it will establish us. It will either strengthen us and give us uh, greater resolution to push forward, greater trust in God or it will destroy us, push us away from God, make us bitter and at the, at the end will kill us. Um, <clears throat> first story I want to look at is a story of, of King Saul and Bible says that in, in Samuel chapter 13, 14, 15 there is a story developing where King Saul he's faced with with this uh, he's faced with an enemy that's Philistines that's about to attack him he's, fa he's faced with almost certain death because Saul has only 3,000 men, he has an army of 3,000 people and the Philistines that are coming against him, they have just chariots alone, 3,000 chariots plus 6,000 chariot riders and Bible says a, a vast army like a, like a sea sand on the shore. So King Saul he's facing a threat of death. He's facing a threat of slavery. He's facing a threat of occupation. He's facing a threat of financial, uh, of, uh, financial loss. She's facing a threat of humiliation. He is, he has a legitimate, he has a legitimate right to be afraid. He has a, 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 a legitimate, um, he has a legitimate fear. It's not, um, that's not something he made up in his mind. That's not something he kind of uh, came up with the worst case scenario. This was the fact, this was the scenario that he was facing. And Saul, King Saul, he started out the right way. He started out seeking a prophet, seeking a word from God. But as the prophet delayed, we see the army begin to scatter Bible says they begin to be fearful of Philistines they begin to run into the caves and hide and then Saul eventually gives in to that fear and he that fear led them to disobey God fear will lead you into disobedience if unchecked fear fear that um that you don't you you don't um you will not the fear that you will not get hold of and control will eventually will lead you into disobedience to God's word and to disobedience into God. It will lead you down the path that you did not desire. We see King Saul, he, uh, he runs out of patience. Uh, he gives into the, this public, public fear and this, 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 um, uh, this commotion that's going on and he brings a sacrifice um, and 
as soon as he finished that, King Saul, uh, Prophet Samuel comes to him and says, Samuel, what have you done? Why have you not waited as you've been uh, instructed? You should have waited for me. He says, because you gave in to fear, because you did what was pleasing in your sight, because you were impatient, now your kingdom will be taken away from you forever. And because of that decision that he made based on a temporary situation, based on, on the fear that he was facing, his future was destroyed. Don't base you don't base temporary decision uh, don't base your permanent decisions on your temporary situation don't base your temp don't, don't base your permanent decisions in the in the time of, of 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 fear don't give in to fear and make permanent decisions in your life we see that that disobedience led them to destruction unchecked fear will lead you to make critical mistakes every time you give in to fear even if it's a legitimate fear fear for your life fear uh, of economic loss fear of going bankrupt fear of losing your loved one uh, whatever the fear might be when you respond out of fear you will always make critical mistakes critical mistakes in your life you will always go you will always choose the wrong path to take you will always be impatient because faith breeds patience, fear gives you, uh, uh, fear breeds impatience. And so we see that King Saul, he suffered a devasta devastating loss. He lost his kingdom. He lost, uh, not only he, he lost his own life eventually, but he lost, uh, he lost his family. He lost everything, literally everything. Uh, in the same similar situation, in the same type of situation, almost exact, King Jehoshaphat, he hears that uh, the nation of um, Moab and Ammon and a few other nations, they come in against them. King Jehoshaphat, uh, Jehos uh, Jehoshaphat, he is facing annihilation, he is facing slavery, he is facing exactly the same thing that King Saul was facing. But in that moment, in that time, King Jehoshaphat, he makes a different decision. He makes different, he takes different approach and different step, different steps. He takes steps towards faith instead of fear. And his story turns out to be different. So I want us to take a look at what King Jehoshaphat did. And there's four things that I found for myself to encourage my faith. And hopefully this will encourage you and your faith that King Jehoshaphat did to combat fear and to build his faith. We see in verse 3 in uh, 2 Chronicles chapter 20 that Jehoshaphat he feared. Bible says in verse 3 says and Jehoshaphat feared. He experienced fear. See you can be a man of faith, a woman of faith. You can be a righteous man but you can still experience fear because fear is a natural, uh, it's a natural feeling that we experience when we face uncertainty, when we face harm, when we face death, when we face some, uh, uh, when we face unknown. And so King Jehoshaphat, instead of giving into his fear, he, Bible says, first thing he does, he seeks God through prayer and fasting. So anytime you find yourself afraid, Every time you find yourself facing uncertainty, every, any time you find yourself being fearful uh, for uh, the, maybe you, you're facing sickness or you're, going to, you're battling through, through a sickness that, that uh, you might end up dying or you might end up uh, being uh, severely affected by it. Or if you, maybe you're facing a um, financial loss, facing bankruptcy loss of a job, loss of contract, loss of your, uh, of your business. You can do two things. You can try to act out of fear, begin to borrow money, begin to do this, begin to do that, begin to try to solve it on your own. Or you can go to God. You can wait on God through prayer, through fasting. The Bible says that we need to come to God with thanksgiving and, and supplication, bringing all, our, all of our requests and our needs before God. 
Or we can begin to be in panic and choose to not wait on God. Ignore His guidance, ignore His instruction and begin to try to do things on our own. We see that King Jehoshaphat, first thing that he does, he goes into fasting. He declares fasting. He goes into prayer and begins to see God's face. I think when you face with uncertainty, first thing that you got to do, you have to go talk to God. Not talk to your advisors, not talk to, not talk to your friends, even though all of those things are good. Bible says that in, in a, uh, 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 that there's a safety in, uh, in, uh, in a multitude of, of uh, counselors. All of those things are good. But first and foremost, uh, and the first thing that we got to do, we got to run to God. We got to pour our heart out to God. We got to let God know that we are afraid. God is not afraid of your fear. Let him know that you are afraid of your enemies. Let him know that you are afraid of the uncertainty. Let him know that you are afraid of the fact that I'm not sure what tomorrow is going to bring. God is not afraid of your fear. Because often we think that, that faith is absence of fear. But it's not. It's, faith is simply looking to God for a solution. Faith is simply looking to God that He is your provider. He is your healer. Despite of, of faith is not what if. But faith is even if. Somebody, uh, somebody said that faith is not what if God doesn't come through. What if God doesn't heal me? What if I lose my job? What if I lose my family? What if I lose my, my, my parents, my, my, my grandparents to this coronavirus or, or, or other sickness? But faith is even if God doesn't come through, He's still God. Even if I don't get healed. God is still my healer. Even if I, I, I will have to go bankrupt and I lose everything like Job did, I know my Redeemer lives and He will restore me to even greater glory than previously before. Faith is not an absence of fear. Faith is, uh, faith is to have courage in spite of fear. And so we see that the way Joseph had, he combats his fears and he builds his face, he goes to God, he talks to God, he brings, he brings uh, his request to God. He begins to speak to God, he begins to humble himself. Bible says that if my people humble myself, they turn from their wicked ways and then they pray to me that I will hear them, I will heal them, I will deliver them. So I want to encourage you that in this time, as we're locked up in our houses, as we you know we have more more time on our hands let's spend more time in prayer let's spend more time seeking God let's spend more time in his word let's spend more time with God because God can get you through this God can supernaturally get you to the other side um, we have on Monday this coming Monday Tuesday Wednesday we have uh, prayer and fasting our church, uh, we as a church, uh, we do every single month, first three days of month, first, first Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday of every month, we pray together as a church and we fast and we see God's face. And despite of this coronavirus, we first was wondering, should we do it? Should we uh, continue this, this, uh, this prayer and fasting? Should we not? Should we do it from home? Will it be easy? But we've, we've decided that, you know, we have to do it, especially in this time, that we have to see God through prayer and fasting. So this Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday coming up, I encourage you wherever you're at, uh, wherever you are watching us from India, South Africa, watching us from Europe, you're watching us in uh, from um, South America, you're watching us in, in United States, wherever you're at, Canada, join us in this prayer and fasting. Let's see God during this time. What a better time to see God than this time. Because during times of troubles and uncertainty, it's easier to see God, it's true. It is true. It's easier to see God. Sometimes, you know, the problems and the heat of the problems, it kind of forces us to, to humble ourselves. It brings the right perspective. It tells us that we're not in control. God is in control. So we need to see God more. So during this time, let's pray. Let's see God's face through prayer and fasting. Second thing that we, I see that Jehoshaphat does in verse 5, then Jehoshaphat stood in the assemblies of Judah and Jerusalem and the house of the Lord before the new court. Jehoshaphat, he went to church. Jehoshaphat went to the house of God. Now I know right now at this moment we can't physically go to church but we can join online. We can join our home groups 
okay but I'm speaking not just for this time but anytime you find yourself in difficult situation oftentimes oftentimes difficult situations uh, make people bitter bitter against God why did God allow this to happen why did this person in my family died I prayed for them to be healed to for them to be why did, it, uh, did this person got in a car accident and died why did this happen and that happened I prayed that God didn't answer and 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 an unanswered prayer and uh, kind of sets a root of bitterness in their heart and instead of going to God and letting God know their frustration their disappointment their fears they distance themselves from God they distance themselves from church they distance themselves from the community of saints and they leave the church I want to tell you that don't allow fear to drive you away from church away from your community away from the saints away from your home group allow that fear on the opposite push you closer to God's people home groups whether it's online whether it's in person once the quarantine is over be part of the community be part of a local church don't be a person that while we, we we promote church online while we promote being connected through online but make sure you also have a local church where you are part of a pastor that you have that can pastor you a, a leaders that you have that you're submitted to so that you can be discipled so you can grow in Jesus and be held accountable be a part of the church go to church the Bible says that do not forsake as, uh, not not forsaking our own assembly together as the habit of some but encourage one another in Hebrew 10 25 Bible says in Proverbs 27 17 that iron sharpens iron so one man sharpens another there's another story of Eli of Elijah prophet Elijah a mighty man of God and he was afraid and it's interesting if you listen if you read the story of Elijah he was afraid after literally a few days after uh, after performing some crazy miracles Elijah the story of Elijah goes like this Elijah comes out of three, uh, three years of hiding comes and confronts King uh, Queen Elizabeth and King Ahab he challenges them and their gods and their prophets did I say King Elizabeth sorry Queen, Queen Jezebel my bad so he challenges Jezebel and King Ahab and the prophets. He goes up to the mountain and he says the God that will answer by fire he's a true God. So pretty much I'm, I'm talking about he's a man of faith. He has courage. One man against the whole nation. One man against 400 uh, Baal prophets. And he says a God who will answer by fire. I mean you got to have some serious faith. And he challenges them and of course God shows up not only God answers by fire uh, just uh, consuming sacrifice he consumes everything even the water the wood the stone I mean it's a crazy miracle just fire comes down from heaven Bible says and licks it all up and then he goes on I mean I'm talking about courageous men men full of faith goes on and he kills 400 men 400 prophets of Baal I mean we're talking about men of faith men, men of courage we're talking about zealous men I mean that's a man that I want to be full of courage and faith and not only then God gives him a supernatural speed he outruns the horses and the chariots I'm talking about eventful time of his life I'm talking about going through and performing some crazy things and a few days later maybe not even that much Bible says he, run, he runs away from Jezebel fearing for his life. My question is prophet Elijah what, what are you thinking like you just killed 400 men what is this one woman that's against you? You just performed some crazy miracles what's going on what happened? But even great men of faith can fall into fear. Thank God that he recovered for it and he didn't give in to it with the help of an angel and help of God. So that's why I'm saying don't be afraid to come to God with your fear. Just don't act out of it. You can talk to God about your fear but don't act out of your fear. And so we see that one of the reasons why Elijah was 
afraid we're still talking about going to church being a part of the church being a part of community being a part of home group one of the reasons why Elijah was afraid he admits to God is because I am alone that was his fear there's two two things I'm gonna underline the second one but his first one he says I am alone everybody all the prophets are dead I am alone see we were never meant to be alone and this pandemic showed it to us that's why one of the worst form of punishment in a country that exists is being jailed or being in prison and if, if you misbehave in that confinement the worst form of punishment is you being isolated completely in a box by itself by yourself without any human interaction our mind can't handle it we need see God gave us the spirit to connect to God he gave us the body so that we could connect with the world physical world with the earth and he gave us a soul so that we can in, interconnect with each other we that part of us longs for another person another a, a community and the reason one of the one of the main reasons why Elijah was running for his life one of the reasons why he was afraid and when uh, even when depressed and wanted to die was because he felt alone but God tells him listen Elijah you're not alone you're not alone there's 7,000 of people like you at just the prophets we're not even talking about priests and Levites and other men of God other people that fear God so one thing I want to um, one thing I want to encourage you is don't be alone even when this quarantine ends don't be alone see what devil will succeed if he can isolate you he can send you thoughts of fear I'm worthless I'm nobody nothing's happening nothing's working out in my life uh, I'm gonna die from this disease find yourself in a community get plugged into home groups that's why home groups are so essential you gotta be part of a circle you gotta be a part of the group that knows you and you know them go to church amen the next thing that he does in verse 10 actually it starts from verse 7 he begins to remember God's promises and past victories if you want to combat fear and build your faith you have to remember God's promises to you and his and, and past victories we read verse 7 says are you not a, our God who drove our inhabitants from this land before your before your people of Israel and gave it to the descendants of Abraham your friend forever he begins to recall and tell God he begins to encourage himself with the past victories that God has done in in in, in the life of Israel in his life and he begins to go on and and and, and describe how God protected him during famine and pestilence how he in, in verse 10 it says and now here are the people of Ammon and Moab and Mo and the mountain of Seir whom uh, whom you would not least Israel uh, whom you would not let Israel invade when they came out of the land of Israel Israel uh, the land of Egypt he begins to remind God that these very nations that are coming against them in the past God stopped them from invading and destroying Israel so I want to encourage you in this time you might be facing uncertainty you, you maybe you don't know if they're gonna call you back for the job that you you had um, or, or if your business will survive this or, or, or that I want you don't focus on what you're gonna lose or what you might lose or what you already lost or losing but focus on the goodness of God in your life focus on what God has already done in your life focus on how far God has brought you through and begin to speak it begin to confess it it says that Jehos Jehoshaphat he began to say begin to speak God's promises of your life he begins to remind God said God we can't be annihilated by this army because didn't you promise this land this land is a promised land to Abraham and his people and his descendants we cannot be annihilated God because you said remind God of his word remind God of his promises in your life don't get defeated don't give in to fear allow his word to rebuild you speak his word be reminded of of God's victories in your life of God's promises in your life what you focus on will determine what you will be filled with if you focus on fear I mean if you focus on negative things 
if you focus on this constant news how many people died out of this virus how many people are affected how many people will die if you're gonna focus on what's happening with the economy economy is worse than it was during a great depression and this and that honestly just 30 minutes of it will destroy every bit of faith that you got in it what you focus on what you give attention to will fill you and will produce that very thing negative news I mean we as a church we don't ignore the pandemic and what's happening and the casualties uh, and, and, the, and, 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 and the economical hardships that we're in we, we, we're not ignorant but don't focus on it find positive things find things how many people have already recovered the medication that's being developed that that's that that's helping people to recover focus on the fact what government is doing to help to boost the economy it will come up it will not it will not be like that great depression passed and 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 and, and, uh, and people um rose up and and people uh, businesses rose up and we became better than ever 2008 when the recession hit also took a lot of people down but short few years shortly after we were back on back where we were and better than ever before we will come out of this focus on the bright side on the good news focus on the word of God let the word of God feed you let what he says about you feed you his promises for you the second reason coming back to prophet Elijah second reason why prophet Elijah reveal, uh, reveals when he is talking to God second reason why he uh, was afraid was because he saw Jezebel kill the prophets of God and he thought he was afraid of uncertainty will God spare my life will God come through for me this person died out of cancer I have exactly the same cancer and they prayed and they still died this person claimed declared that this gonna happen that's gonna happen they're gonna receive the breakthrough yet they filed for bankruptcy you know prophet Elijah was focusing on what died what was lost what was um, taken away and when he started talking to God I want you to notice what God says to him he says Elijah yes some prophets are dead and we don't know why we don't know what happened was it their time was it their destiny was it their was it was why God we, we there's things that happen in life why some people don't get healed why some people don't get delivered why some people uh, experience hardship there's things in our life that we do not know but one thing we see from the story of Elijah that God refocuses Elijah and he says I spared 7,000 Elijah was focusing on how many died how many were killed God comes to Elijah and says Elijah listen there's at least 7,000 that are spared. I want to encourage you. Don't focus on what God has not done in your life. Focus on what He has done. Don't build monuments on the things that God has not done in your life. On, on unanswered prayers. Somebody prayed and it didn't work out for them. Somebody got sick with the coronavirus and they were a pastor. They were a leader and they died from it or this or that and they confessed and they declared Psalm 91 that no plagues come, sh sh shall come near my dwelling. We can't look at what's happening around. We can't base our faith on what people did and what has not happened. We have to base our faith solely on the Word of God. We have to find places, testimonies. We have to recall the moments where God did something for us and not focus on the things that He has not done. God comes to Elijah and says, Elijah, don't focus on the prophets that were killed. Focus on the ones that I have spared. Focus on the ones that I have spared. I believe that our focus will determine whether we'll be our, what we focus on what we feed ourselves with will be determined whether we were filled with faith or fear if you feel yourself that God has spared 7,000 he will spare me you will be encouraged we see that Elijah he meets God on a mountain he goes to church he meets God there God refocuses him he focuses on it and then we see Elijah 
being renewed. He worships God and it brings me to a last point. Point four is that Jehoshaphat in verse 25 he begins to worship God. He sets aside Levites and he sends them out and the whole of before he sends them out the whole nation praises God sings praises to the Lord and they and they say they're saying praise the Lord for his mercy endures forever and we see that God when they begin to worship God when they begin to exalt God see it takes faith to worship God in in spite of uncertainty it takes faith to worship God in spite of hardship in spite of a loss in spite of death it takes faith to worship God to worship to truly worship God it is an expression of faith that's why during this time as you pray and fast as you see God as you feed yourself have time of worship don't just listen to some nonsense watch a bunch of Netflix and listen that some of it has its place don't get me wrong we're not saying just cut everything off but make sure you spend time in his presence worshiping him exalting him praising him telling that that, that everything is in his hands that victory belongs to him that everything in the world is in his hands and nothing is out of his hands nothing is out of his control that you are in the palm of his hand that you're the apple of his eye and then nothing will come near you and hurt you and harm you that, that that God will protect you and that is a form of worship Paul and Silas they were imprisoned and they had many reasons to complain to God they were preaching the gospel they delivered a woman from an evil spirit they got falsely accused and they got beaten and thrown into confinement into the prison I mean at very least do not complain but definitely not worship but despite of that being beaten being hurting the Bible says they had open wounds that's how badly they got beaten Paul and Silas they begin to worship God they begin to exalt him they could have been afraid for their life they could have been whatever but they begin to worship and during that time God came through supernaturally. I believe that he, despite of despite of uh, impossible situation, despite of being confined, despite of being in prison, despite of limitation, despite of things looking uh, doom and gloom, if we worship God, God will bring us through supernaturally. If we focus on God's goodness, if we pray and fast and see God's face, if we consecrate ourselves, if we worship God from the bottom of our heart, from everything that we have I believe that God will bring you through this time and any time that you face hardship supernatural God will bring a supernatural provision in in the story of Jehoshaphat we see that he put he puts up a Levites right in front of not only they just praise and worship God uh, and thank him but their battle plan was simple Levites up front and then soldier followed and as they were praising God as they are worshiping Bible says there came a confusion into the can uh, to, to the enemy's camp and enemies began begin to kill each other and by the time they came to the place of battle by the time Israelites came to the place of battle the enemy was destroyed every single one of them Bible says not one escaped and without fighting a battle without fighting a single battle they were enjoying a spoils of war I want to tell you today that you're gonna come out of this uh, this quarantine better than you were before you might have to go through some pressing times you might have to apply for a new job you might have to start a new business you might have to do something but I'm telling you if you don't give up if you can worship in God if you keep focusing on God declaring his goodness his promises over your life you will come out of this better than you came into it you will come out of it better than you come into it. You know that some of these greatest businesses in this country came out of some of the most difficult financial times. In 2008 recession, out of that time, we, the, we've seen in this country come out some really big businesses that all you are all familiar with. WhatsApp was, was started then, Uber was created, Groupon, Instagram, Pinterest, Slack, Square. In that recession time, somebody who did not give up hope, who had a positive outlook, who looked to the bright future, came out of it bigger than they were in it. Throughout the history, GM Motors in 1901, when the country was going through financial difficulties, they 
became great. They became a big company as we know today. Disney in 1923 also, in a very difficult time, in a hardship time in an economy, in a country. Burger King 1953 after Korean War. Uh, war. Things, economy was stagnant. They started it and then we know Burger King. Thank God for Burger King. Microsoft in 1975 with the high unemployment and inflation rate, they started the business and they came out of that time and we know Microsoft today all over the world. In 2001, Apple started in, 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 in a burst of dot-com uh, bubble. The worst time to start a uh, tech company. And they came out and we know Apple today. I want to encourage you that your best days are in front of you, not behind you. Your best days are ahead of you. Don't give up hope. Don't be depressed. Don't fall into despair. Don't give in to fear. Don't start making foolish decisions that will lead you in destruction. But choose to walk by faith. You are a son of faith. You are a daughter of faith. We have inheritance of faith and we must walk by faith. Bible says that it's impossible to please God without faith. So today you and I, we need to choose faith. We need to choose faith. The fear in man brings a snare, but he who trusts the Lord will be exalted, David says in his psalm. Bible mentions to not be afraid in the Bible 365 times once for every day of your life. God says to Abraham, do not be afraid. I am your shield and your great reward. David says in Psalm 23 verse, uh, verse 4, even though I walk through the valleys of shadow of death, I will fear no evil because you are with me. Psalm 34 4 says, I sought the Lord and He answered me and He delivered me from all of my fears. I pray that God will deliver you today from your fear. I pray that today you will choose faith. I pray that today you'll pick yourself up and you choose to combat fear. You choose to work with God through prayer, through fasting, through worship, through focusing your mind on the things that are, are good, things that are godly, through confession of faith. And today I believe that God will give you a supernatural victory. You will receive spoils of war without fighting a war battle you will be greatly blessed I know it takes faith to believe that you're gonna come out of this time with the big spoils but that's what faith is we are different type of people we are people of faith we don't live by this world standard we don't live by this world economy we can be affected by it but our ultimate source is God He's supernatural God. He can bring death consolations, supernatural death consolations. He can bring a miraculous contract to you. He can bring raven to supply for you. For God is a God of impossible. In Jesus name, I encourage you today, be strong and do not fear. Your God will come. He will come with vengeance. With divine retribution, He will come to save you. I encourage you today, choose faith choose God, choose worship, choose to look to Him and He will come and save you with vengeance. Not just, not just barely save you, He will save you and restore you in Jesus mighty name. I hope you receive something today and I hope you choose faith over fear in Jesus mighty name. Hey this is Pastor Vlad and thank you for watching this sermon. Please click on the subscribe so that you can be a part of our Hungry Generation YouTube community and click on the bell as well so that you can be notified when we upload the new sermon. Thank you for watching and God bless you.